So let's talk about artificial intelligence. First, I want to say, forget everything that you've seen from Hollywood. This is primarily about fear and action. This is the Hollywood recipe. You know, you take a problem that we have in our society, like terrorism, geoengineering, and then you make a nice film that threatens to kill everyone. And, and that sells pretty well. So let's leave that aside for a second. The second one is, what is intelligence? We are, we're actually struggling to think about that, what humans are in terms of intelligence. It's, it's not so simple. But we have at least eight or ten different types of intelligence. Lots of research on this. Machines, are they intelligent like, like we are? Can they ever be intelligent like we are? I wouldn't rule out that they can ever be in, as intelligent. But right now, just the fact that the machine can look at data and can process quicker than I do, does not make them truly intelligent. It makes them faster with data. And that is a huge advantage. But we should not believe scenes like this. I'm sure you've all seen the movie. Yeah, it's very entertaining, maybe in 100 years. And what we have right now is really completely different. The CEO of DeepMind here in London, Demis Hassabis, defines artificial intelligence as taking information and data and turning it into knowledge, cognitive systems. So the very big thing that's happening today because of what's called machine learning and, and uh, neural network ideas is that we have machines that can teach themselves. They can look at lots of data and they can say, hey, I found a pattern. This expense does not belong here. It keeps showing up. It should be somewhere else. It can do those kind of things. Can it make a value judgment? No. Can it understand why you're trying to not have something on the books? No. Can you understand things that a human would understand in three seconds? I mean, the difference between knowledge and understanding is really quite simple. When you come home and you meet your kids and they're telling you about school, and they're telling you about grades and whatever happened, that's called information. But when you look at your 12-year-old son, and the son, your son is smiling and grinning really wide, you realize for the first time ever in his life, he's fallen in love. And he, he doesn't hang up a poster or make a tweet. You, know? you just know. That's what humans do. And we do that without any effort, any processing, really. It just happens. So there's a very big difference when we think about what we are. Right? A computer system that turns information into knowledge, that will be extremely powerful. But that knowledge is not like human knowledge. It is a certain computer knowledge. TripAdvisor is a great example. What real knowledge does TripAdvisor have about food? Has it ever eaten? Does the machine actually know what it feels like to do that? So it's a very powerful tool, but it's, it's not like what we would say, like value judgment on food. Right? Here's really what companies are doing with artificial intelligence today. Very straightforward. This is really technology that allows you to do things better and smarter than before. I would say it's not intelligent, it's smart. It's replacing dumb software from before, you could say. So most of what we get sold as AI today, it's funny when you look at the news feeds, you talk about AI. Every day there's a major release and saying, you know, General Motors is now using AI to close your car doors, or uh, Nestle is using AI to figure out a better coffee for the Nespresso. So all you have to do is to be in the news today, you say, I'm using AI to do whatever you're already doing, and you'll get nice news from that. But what we see here is really called intelligent assistance. That's what we're doing with technology today, and it's extremely powerful. So I'm going to show you an example. We had a, a company in China release an AI, a bot, essentially, that is a news anchor. So this, this bot allegedly can act like a news anchor and get information and speak live about it. Hello, everyone. I'm an English artificial intelligence anchor. This is my very first day in Xinhua News Agency. My voice and appearance are modeled on Zhang Zhao, a real anchor with Xinhua. The development of the media industry calls for continuous innovation and deep integration with the international advanced technologies. I will work tirelessly to keep you informed as texts will be typed into my system uninterrupted. Well, you get I look forward to bringing you the brand quiet. new news experiences. <laughs> Okay. Thankfully, he went away now. Uh, so first, he doesn't look very happy. That's one thing. But second, 
Is that actually a machine talking? Really what it is, it's a fancy script. I mean, people looked at this and say, this is not like I'm going to talk to a person and they would respond in real time like you would. It's essentially a machine that gets data feeds and has a set of thousands of answers and strings them together. So when we see this example on the internet about Sophia, the robot that has Saudi citizenship, remember that? And we have to you know, be a little bit skeptical of what's really happening behind the scenes. So these are kind of interesting machines like Pepper, right? like the bot that can actually respond to humans. They have scripts, they run responses, and uh, of course you've seen the movie Her, you know, where people fall in love with machines. That's not so unlikely. <laughs> it's actually one of the best science fiction films to watch. But here's the bottom line, really. Intelligent machines, we should not confuse a clear view with a short distance. I think it's possible that we have truly intelligent machines. What we have today is smart machines, and that's good. Personally speaking, I don't think I want a really intelligent machine. Not intelligent like us. I think there could be a huge issue about confusing them with who we are. So it's fine with me if they're super intelligent, I will definitely use that. And this is, of course, what we're talking about at this event. But here's the bottom line in terms of what's happening. Artificial intelligence has already become so good that it has covered many of these uh, landscapes down here. This is called the, the landscape of uh, competency. And Max Tagmark talked about this in a TED talk, so I took some of his slides. Basically, technology, AI, has already done Jeopardy and chess, intelligent assistance, even poker, the Go game, the call center. That's rising. And rising straight into your turf. Is it capable of completely replacing us? No. Is it a powerful tool? Yes. I think it's capable of many things, but at a certain point, it will stop. Because at that point, it takes human ingenuity. It takes our way that we think about things, the way that we look at the future, the way that we look at facts. So right now, this is really mostly about intelligent assistance, IA. So if you can do one thing from now on, don't say artificial intelligence, say intelligent assistance. That's much more likely that we can use that. That's really what these machines are doing. On the second level, we have AI. That's already happening, I think, uh, in really smart systems like IBM Watson. That's really kind of thinking further. And then the last level, which Elon Musk talks about a lot, and also Stephen Hawking, is artificial general intelligence, AGI. And for this, we're going to need a moratorium. We have to agree on how we're going to use this. Imagine a machine that has an IQ of a million. This will be possible in 20 years. And that machine connects to other machines with an IQ of a million. I mean, you don't have to think too far to think of that as a potential threat. <laughs> so really what we see already today you know, is, is really uh, this idea of the intelligence explosion. Machines have become infinitely smart. That we don't really want. Because it could be that this machine will ultimately become so smart that we wouldn't control it. That's maybe 30 years away. Just want to put that into the hopper. I think we need to agree on how far we want to go with this. Intelligent bookkeeping and accounting is one thing, but you know, intelligent self-killing weapons, maybe not such a good 